Hi guys. Hi Mary R, Catherine, Thelma, Adeline, Annette, Laura. And looks like I might have everybody. Betty. Hi Betty. Okay, I think I got everybody. I'm sure we'll have others dropping in here within the next few minutes. I was just taking a little time here to cut myself a few die cut pieces so I won't have to take quite so much time with that later. Boy, I love this die in this set. Look at these beautiful, perfect ferns. Uh, would you put them on my hands, please? It's a little tiny fern right now. <laughs> there it is. It's still Look at these beautiful it's ferns. Isn't that just the prettiest die? And to have that be a free magazine die, I'm just so impressed with that. So, you know, you cut it in different colors and it just has just a really pretty tone to it. I'm mostly using the magazine today, but I am taking liberty to add a few things from my stash because that's what the stash builder kits are all about. So I am using some golden, I think it's called golden or gold, um, shimmer paper to make some of these leaves because these ferns just look so pretty with the other colors in the kit. I've also cut some out of green and then there's a salmon color. So I've cut some out of that, but um, we definitely are gonna do that. Um, I brought in two ink pads, as I told you before. I have peacock green and fire coral that I'm using. Many of you went and got those too. And uh, you'll like having those, I think. I love that. It's a beautiful color, isn't it? Yeah, very pretty. And um, let's see. I'm also bringing in some of my little markers. Um, the um, Zig clean color, real brush markers, in a variety of colors for coloring this and that. And I need a pen. What did I do with all of my pens? Okay. That may not be all I use as I create here. You're sure to see me grab something. Yes, Mary, we have maxed out the Ukraine donation. We have over 250 reviews. So in the near future, I will be screenshotting my payment to the World Central Kitchen so that you can all see that that donation was made. I'll like screenshot my thank you for your donation page and show the $500. So we will be getting that done in the very near future. That doesn't mean stop writing reviews because you still, the more reviews you write between now and the end of the month, the more chances you have to be entered in our drawings for the for the account credits somebody's going to get 50 somebody's going to get 30 and somebody's going to get 20 so i'm th i'm thrilled <laughs> i'm super happy that you guys ran that up to the 500 dollars limit i love that that makes me very happy and um yeah so there we go on that let me show you one else you're going to get your kit. How many people have their kit? How many people have this now? Is anybody working along? Margie raised her hand. <laughs> Who else is going to work along today? Anybody going to work along? You know, you can do your own thing entirely. Well, 
I'm doing mine, but um, if anybody, I'd just like to know if anybody's working along while we are going here because it impacts my my um, speed of delivery. So I like to know who's working along. I know a bunch of you have the kit and you are going to love it. You are going to totally love it. For those of you who don't have the kit yet, I just have to show you again what you're going to get. This is the Indigo Blue um, Mixed Media Special 3. It's got the butterflies on the cover. And you get the Indigo Blue Magazine, which is just chock full. I was just telling Margie, I don't know that I've ever seen a box kit where I was more impressed with the designs that they presented than I am with this one. I really, really love a lot of the designs that they put in this book this time. And most of the designs in the book are using this kit. So you just get so many really wonderful project ideas. So that's very cool. Marked a few things. I thought if I need inspiration to get started on something, I could jump over and use that. Um, in addition to the kit, you are going to get this absolutely unbelievably great stamp set. If you bought this stamp set just like this, you'd pay 20 to $25 for it. You remember that we had the, um, the A5 size stamp sets from Hot Off the Press, and those used to be eight or $18.99. This is a eight and a quarter by 11.75, 11.75 stamp set. You get the fern, you get the butterfly, you get some background busyness, which can always really look good to just kind of, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're hooked on quilling, Catherine. It's very fun. And wait until you see what we do this week. We got a myriad of beautiful flowers. We've got that cluster of leaves that I love in the die cut. You've got some great inspirational sayings. You've got this stamp, which I think is just elegant and wonderful. This is a really, really, really good stamp set. In addition to that, you get a stencil. Rather than showing you the white stencil, which can be difficult to see, I actually um, inked it so you could see. Hi, Betty. Um, I love this. Each one of these areas is a little distressed, but I love this. And I think we might have to work this into some, yeah, purchased a large butterfly stamp years ago and paid $17.99 for it. I believe that, yeah. Annette. It's so easy to do. It was so easy to do. And this stamp set is just phenomenal. So this is what your stencil looks like. You get distressed squares. You get distressed uh, diamonds. You get distressed dotted lines. And you get this pretty floral pattern. And I think we're going to have to probably use this in some way today because, you know, it just must be done. And <laughs> and we've got three cutting dies. We've got that leaf cluster, which I love. I really like to stamp the leaf cluster because this shape doesn't make a lot of sense otherwise. But I do love the leaf cluster stamped and cut. And then you've got this beautiful fern and you've got the word bloom. This is just an outstanding kit, I'm telling you. And you get all of these papers. Now, my papers, because I already made some sample cards for you, are all chewed up and funny looking, but I'll still show them to you. <laughs> you get this. You get some sentiments and focal points to add. Got yellow on the back of that one. Look at this beautiful paper. So very pretty. That's got kind of a, a splatter design on the back. I love these with the partial flowers. I love to cut 
and actually show just part of a flower. It's kind of like doing the George O'Keefe thing, you know, when you just let part of the flower show. That pretty uh, spatter yellow. Here's that beautiful big butterfly. Spatter yellow again, some more beautiful green. I need, I'm glad to see I have so much green left. I need to cut some more ferns. We've got this glorious coral color. Here's another sheet of those inspirations. Look at this. This is beautiful. We're just probably going to have to use that too. I don't know. We'll see. I could be making cards till midnight. <laughs> I'll just tell you guys the last one out. Shut the lights off. <laughs> I love this kit. I can't help myself. I really love it. Got a few more pieces here. So it gives you an idea what you get. If you if I still have this much paper left and I have made all these cards, let me show you my cards again. And I think for the most part, I'm just going to show you these and walk through how I made them. But there is one in here we're going to make again because it's a little tricky unless you see it done. This is my five by seven. I think if I did this one again, I would make this top butterfly on cardstock because it's on, just on the lightweight paper that I used for the other one. And I would like that to have a little more, a little more texture to this so it would just stand up. On the other hand, when it's standing up as the lightweight paper, it definitely gives the impression of a butterfly. So maybe, I don't know. But you can see what I've done here. Simple, simple, simple. I've taken a five by seven card. I've covered it in lightweight black paper. I have used that beautiful green paper and I cut out just a piece of one of those huge butterflies. So I cut my, my green paper to be, let's see, four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And I layered that on. I cut this sentiment directly off of that sentiment sheet. And then I stamped two butterflies. I believe I stamped it on the yellow paper. I added some orange to those, I cut them out and layered them. And I think that's as pretty as it can be, but talk about simple. Yeah, the lightweight paper really does let the wings move a lot. So I don't know, maybe do do it in the lightweight paper, but I think that's just as pretty as it can be. And so simple, the design is so simple, guys. So that's our first one for today. Any questions on that one? I did fold the butterfly on both sides of the thorax and perked up the wings on top. And then I took my marker. I don't try to cut those antennae out because I'm not crazy. <laughs> Although some would argue that point. My husband's not in here. He would argue immediately. Um, I just drew the, the antenna on. But I think they need the antennae. They don't look quite right without it. So there's that first card. Our second card, this is another super simple one. I took a five by seven card and I stamped my image of that big, beautiful stamp onto a white piece of cardstock. I just stamped it on there. And then I took my blending tool. What these? Yeah. I took my blending tool, I dipped it in my ink pad, I blotted it off a little bit, and then I just added color. Just added color to this top area. And then I did the same thing, and I added color using my peacock green to the bottom. Now, if I did this card again tonight, I think I would raise my bouquet of fern and my bloom just a little bit and let more of my uh, peacock green on the bottom show. That's my only regret in this card is I really would love to just 
to have brought that up just, you know, half inch an inch and let more of my, let more, good night, Catherine, um, let more of that um, peacock green show. Um, I trimmed this out. I lined it in black. I added bloom and then I took some lightweight cord. You could take um, raffia. You could take, um, what's the stuff I can't be around twine, just regular twine um, and tie yourself a little informal bow. I just think it, it looks great to have just, just a real, uh, uh, just a small little pretty bow added. Okay, so that was super simple. I did nothing with the background of my card. I could have. Shoot, thank you. That's what I was trying to say, Betty. That stuff <laughs> chokes me up. Oh my gosh, I can't even be in the room with it anymore, which is really funny because in the 70s, I taught macrame classes with jute. <laughs> oh, terrible. And burlap. Oh, I can't be in the same room with burlap either, Mary. Terrible. Which is also weird because when I was a kid, I had horses and I was I had burlap bags around me all the time. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, this card, once again, super simple. I'm just adding a few of those pretty die cuts. I did stamp and die cut the leaf cluster because it looks better with the veining in it to explain. But love that. And so easy. So very easy. This one, I took an A6 card. Now you're going to see my A6 card kind of goes the wrong way or it opens a different way than any of the ones we sell. I had a pack of um, great big cards, half sheet cards that came in with a corners bumped and I wasn't about to throw those away. So I took them and cut them all down to use for my demo cards because I couldn't stand to waste them. So anyway, I took my A6 card. I covered it with brown cardstock. I cut a slightly smaller piece of my yellow and I stamped it with follow your dreams. I had taken one of my Jamie acetate papers. This is Jamie acetate. I stamped it with that beautiful butterfly stamp. And then I had to let it dry overnight. I had to let it dry overnight. That's a really important point. You will really be disappointed by smearing stuff if you don't let that um, that um, hybrid ink dry overnight on your acetate. But it's beautiful. And then I put a, I cut, I just held this up and cut a cut around it and cut a piece of mirror board to match. So I could really catch that gorgeous gold reflection. I folded on both sides of the thorax and I created this really kind of tends to hang a little bit close to the paper, but um, I um, glued both pieces right here. I don't know what's up with that green ink pad. I think I may have stored it on its side. It's Note to self, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I have some baby wipes over here. Maybe one sheet of that would be good. Thank you. Oh, that doesn't help you, <laughs> So I just mounted it, drew in my antenna, and I just love this. <laughs> Okay. What adhesive did I use to secure the butterfly to the card? Great question, Mary. I just used my Cosmic Shimmer. I'll tell you, I use my Cosmic Shimmer 90% of the time. 90% of the time I do that. Now with the acetate, with your sticky tape, your red liner tape? Um, red liner tape would work well. Um, best glue ever would work well also with the acetate because it wants something to hang on to. In this case, I didn't have any problem gluing it because I already had 
this covering of Jamie Powder's on it. So Cosmic Shimmer is a PVA glue. It sure is. So that's how I got this one. Next, I did some coloring. Boy, I love coloring. Um, this my coloring inspiration I took right out of the magazine. Um, they had a pretty colored one like this. I made my card similar to theirs, but just a little different. Um, so I stamped this on white cardstock. I colored it with my clear, clean color markers. You could use any kind of marker, really. You could use, because we st we're stamping with a hybrid stamp pad, you could color this with alcohol inks. You could color this with your, um, your BIC, um, what do we call it? intensity markers. You could color this with your Sharpies. You could color this with your watercolor markers. You could color this with paints. You could color any with anything. I do like the way that I got the real intensity of color with the um, clear color markers. I thought that was beautiful. And one other thing I did here that I think is really important when I was coloring this in. See this white spot? I just left that white and worked around it with the black because I wanted to give the, the impression of dimension there in the center of my flower, which kind of makes that flower look domed, right? Hi, Glenda. Welcome. So I just colored this. Then I trimmed it down to just the out, outline of my, of my stamped image. I put a very thin yellow border on it because I really wanted it to pop. I stamped my love and I put a very thin yellow border on that. Then I took my four by eight card and I measured a piece of brown that would be large enough to let my border show. And I layered everything up. When I was done with that, I added my gems. So this actually has a bit of work in this card, but I just love the way it turned out. So very pretty. And I'll be proud to give that to somebody, I gotta say. All right, the easiest card I did, hands down, the number one easiest card I did. I took a sheet of my yellow. I stamped two butterflies side by side. I was trying to fit those big butterflies onto a four by eight card. So I had to, and I wanted a black border around it. So I had to trim my butterflies. You'll notice that I actually trimmed little bits of my butterfly off here and there just to have enough um, room to get my black border around it. I just thought the black border would be really striking with the yellow and the black and the butterflies. And I think it is. And then I let my white show around it because I just wanted that contrast. I stamped my, your wings already exist. All you have to do is fly. And I backed that with some of my black layering paper. This was the simplest card I did. Stamp, stamp, stamp. And then I cut and layered. <laughs> so very easy, but I love the way it, it turns out. So beautiful. Okay, this one I think we need to do together because it's got an interesting little catch to it. We're forming a Z fold card by taking a five by seven card. And then we are cutting that five by seven at an angle. And then we're putting everything on in angled pieces. So let's do this one together, shall we? I think we should. So let's see. I've got to move a few things around here. And I'm going to get out first my five by seven card. That's not it, that's not it, but that's it. Okay, 
So the first thing I'm going to do here with this card is I'm going to fold it on the score line. The next thing I'm going to do, get myself a scoring tool out here, a bone folder. Let's use a scoring tool off my score pal. I'm going to take this card face and I fold it back on itself. Hmm, maybe I should just use my scoreboard. Let's, that would be easier, wouldn't it? Like, make sure the size of my card, the size of my card is definitely a five. So I'm going to hold that right there. I do want to make sure that it is tucked in well. And I'm going to score the face of my card at two and a half. So hopefully when I fold this back on itself, I get a nice fold when I do. So I'm done with this now. So for a Z fold card, you're just taking your card dimension, whatever it is, and scoring at the halfway point. And now I've got this pretty Z fold card going for me. Now, are you hot, Margie? Margie's having a spell of sorts here. She's using paper bags and things to cool her face. We can probably turn this oh, no. fan it's on a little like bit. Up and down and I'm still not feeling 100%. So it's no big deal. Okay. I'll cool off that. Okay. All right. Now, I want to make this as close to my last one as I can, so I'm going to grab my ruler. Last time, I just kind of cut it and worked around it. This time, I want to see how far down I was on my card face when I cut this angle across here. And I'm going to mark that angle on my new card. So that's four and a half. So I'm going to fold this back out. I'm going to come down here to four and a half. I'm going to make a little tiny mark on my card. You, you guys never see me. Never see me uh, measure much. But this requires just a tad of measuring. Now, I'm going to take my trimmer, and I'm going to cut this at an angle. So, move those out of my way a little bit. And I'm going to cut this at an angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fold of my card. Oops, let's see. How can I get in camera view here? There? Yes, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Just I want, back at me when you're ready. I'm going to put the fold of my card at the top, right on the edge of my trimmer. And I'm going to trim at an angle down to my little mark on my card. And now I have my Z fold with my fold back and I've got that nice angle in it. Don't throw this away because this is going to help us. I'm going to grab a piece of my layering paper and this is just like gel ink paper guys. It's something I had in the pod and I've been using it real regularly. It's a great layering paper. I want to create a black rim around my paper and let and again just for contrast because I love these colors together I love the blue the, the teal color the coral color the black and the white I think all of those just work together it's so pretty so I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut myself a layering piece this four and three quarters by six and three quarters that should allow me a little white border all the way around my black. 
And it does, see there, that's beautiful. It's exactly what I want. So I'm going to glue this in place or tape it or whatever your adhesive of choice. Hi, Roberta. Catherine says hi. She loves you. And she missed you. We're making a Z fold cart, Roberta. We've taken a five by seven and we've trimmed it off at an angle. And then we folded the cover back on itself to create a fun fold. This design idea comes from your magazine. I just loved it, so I made it. Mine's a little different, but you know, yours is going to be different than mine too. So that's cool. All right. So I've got my, my black in there. Now I'm going to rifle through my papers here and find some of that pretty blue. I'd like to find one that had the vines like that again, because I love the way these vines kind of stick up in there. Isn't that neat? So, oh, look here. Oh, well, that's not quite the same. Let me try and see if what else I have. Love the papers in this kit. I really, really do. Ooh, there's one with a big butterfly. I kind of want the vines, though, I think. What have I got here? There's vines. That's the same paper I used. I think you're right. I think Ted's out being a menace. <laughs> Ted was being a menace, barking the neighbor dog. Okay. So four and oh Mary, he got his puppy treats. He's already had some. He is loving his puppy treats. <laughs> I also found out that Fergus the cat has to take some um, medicine for the next couple of months. And it's a little tiny pill. He wouldn't take it in the pill pockets I had. So I tried putting it in one of Teddy's PB Nanas. And I offered it to Fergus and he sniffed it and walked away. But then I picked it up off the floor and pretended to eat it. And he looked at me so indignantly and then I offered it to him again, and he gobbled it all up. <laughs> Teddy doesn't mind that Fergus is getting treats using one of his PB Nanas, because that means the bag's out. And if the bag's out, he's going to get several. <laughs> so, yep, that's what's happening at my house. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this piece down on my backer paper. This is such pretty paper. Okay. So I'll put this down here. Oh, so pretty. So very pretty. Look there. Okay. That's looking good. Now I need another piece of that paper for this panel. And I still have some nice vines on this one and i need a backer panel in my black to go on this card so i'm going to cut one i'm actually going to cut this to six and three quarters which was the size i used before and i'm going to cut this to let's see I want two and a quarter, I want four and a half, I believe. 
two and a quarter and two and a quarter would be four and a half. So I'm going to cut this to four and a half. I'm going to take this flap I cut off. I'm going to kind of center it on there. So they have about the same amount of hangover on both sides. And I'm going to draw myself a line and something that might show. I have a silver gel pen here, so I'll use that. Now, I'm gonna, I've got my angle off of my cutoff. So theoretically, this should work out okay. I'm going to cut this piece in half because each of my panels needs to be two and a quarter inches wide. So and I should have one that's fairly short. Let's go ahead and cut that. Just this side of my score line. I've got one. Now I'm going to have to cut a little off the length because I want that border all the way around, right? So I'm going to cut just a little bit off the length. So I'm going to take about an eighth of an inch off. Let's see how this looks. Am I there yet? Oh, that's looking good. So that's an easy way to get your angles. Does that make sense? Um, I will look, Mary, our mail didn't come in for several days. The um, package from PetSmart was in my chair. The, the boxes get picked up immediately because we don't want porch pirates getting them. But our mail doesn't always come in from our mailbox timely. So let me look for the cards. Okay. And now I'm going to use this one on this flap. And that is already going to be a beautiful match for that. So I can go ahead and put these two pieces down. Does this make sense what I'm doing using the flap I cut off to get my angle, guys? You might find an easier way to do it. That's what I found worked for me. And you don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to cut the piece to fit the space. So I want my nice border all the way around this. Put my black down. I want my nice border all around this. They don't tell you in the magazine how to cut your pieces. So it actually took me a little figure in to decide what to do. And then when I finally figured it out, I thought, well, that seems like that should have been fairly obvious. It wasn't, but it seemed like it should have been. I'm actually cutting my angle just a bit more by hand here, just because I think it could have been just a little better fit. So I actually trimmed my angle just a tad more. You can do that too. But look how pretty that is now. We're getting there, aren't we? Okay. All right. And now I'm going to get some more of my blue out. And I have one panel that's done in blue and one panel that's done in coral. So I'm just going to need a little piece of my blue. It is somewhat directional. So I'm going to pay attention to which way my paper is going when I cut this. 
and this is going on the lower panel it's going to be two inches because the last one was two and a quarter for the black so this is going to be two inches and i think i'll just cut it up here a ways and then i'll cut it off there we go. okay so the trickiest part is figuring out the angle unless of course we are using our cutoff piece to do that. Ooh, I really like these. I like this part. So I think that I will start at the top. My little fold line here will help me to figure it out that I've got it straight. Let's see what I can you come in a little bit. My fold my fold line where I scored my card here. See here? That's helping me make sure I have my paper straight. I'm gonna use my gel pen again and cut across there. Well that would be a more successful venture if I drew straight. There we go. So I'm doing the same thing, Mary R. Exactly the same thing. Okay. So there we go. I need to measure how long I want this to be. This one, I can measure my black and take a, uh, take a quarter inch off. Assuming I have the US measure side of my ruler. So this is four and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this to four inches. I may cut it just a little over just to allow myself a bit of a buffer. Thank you. I cut it just a little over to allow myself a buffer. And yes, it does need to cut down that extra little bit, but that's good. I just, you know, you can't put it back, so. Okay, put my little blue on. This is just such a pretty card. I love this. <laughs> Am I supposed to love my own cards? I do. But this it really isn't my own card either, because like I said, I used one of the recipes from the magazine, because this magazine, guys, on this kit, has really stunning designs, lots of them. I see about six or eight more cards I'd like to make out of this magazine. And that's very unusual for me. Now I end up changing it as I go. I do my own things too. But, you know, if you can get your inspiration from somebody, why not? Okay, I need to find that coral color in the papers. So I'm going back to my paper stack again. I'm going to find a piece of this beautiful coral. And there's one right there with flowers on it. I found this one. Just want to see if there's any others that are more tempting. I think this one's more tempting yet. <laughs> it's got more activity going on in the side and I can use, I think I'm gonna go with this one because I can use this piece and I like the amount of activity I have going on in the pattern there. I love these two, but I like this more. So I'm gonna cut myself a quarter of an inch again And this one needs to be almost six inches. Well, six plus inches. Uh, it's about a half inch down there. I'm going to go with about six and three quarters, and then I can cut down from there. I just want to make sure I have plenty. And I'm going to cut it to two and a quarter inches wide. 
no, two inches wide because my black was two and a quarter. Okay. Now I'm going to take my envelope flap and I'm going to turn this over because <clears throat> my angle is going the opposite direction. I'm going to line that up along my line and it, my score line again. I use that to make sure I've got the right angle. Draw my line there. Cut this off. And then I'll measure to see how long I want this to be. I think when I'm drawing my line, I'm not drawing it quite straight. Mm -hmm. Finding the need to adjust my angle just a little again, but that's okay. You can do that. Just adjust it by trimming it off a little bit. But that's much better. Okay. I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch in length off here. Let's see how this fits. Uh, it's another eighth. Okay, I'm liking that. Here's the way my piece is fitting. I think that's beautiful. Let's go ahead and glue that down. Using that flap that we cut off as your pattern will save you so much time. You may find that you still desire to adjust your angle just a bit like I did right there, but you have such a good starting point to get going with this that it's just a matter of cutting it off to the length that you need. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? It's upside down, but it's still beautiful. Now let's decorate. I may have to cut some more pieces. Let's see what I've got in my little stash here i have got um would you get me a little piece of eighth inch or even quarters okay and as close to so excuse me as close to this color as we can get okay let's see well, we're going to get some of these beautiful gold ferns and my blue doesn't show at all, so I think I'm going to need to. Can I just take a little bit of the paper so I can bear Sure. I think that I've got the right color for these. Okay. The gold looks beautiful on there, but these just disappear, don't they? So let's use that. We could. It might look really dramatic. I don't know. I don't know. We could try cutting that fern out of black. Let's see what happens if we do that. That might be really interesting. I can. I've got the perfect match in eighth inch. That's fine. Does that, how much yeah. do you want? Uh, enough to tie a bow this big. <laughs> okay. I'm going to adjust all my papers here. I'm going to cut a couple of these ferns in black and just see. I don't know. It might be too dramatic, but let's find out. You don't know till you try, right? It might make it pop. It might be just the thing. Well, that's running. Let's take a little piece of this blue satin. And I'm just going to do a rabbit ears bow. Two loops. One loop over the other loop. Come through the hole in the middle. Pull it up. 
got a little tiny rabbit ears bow. What Christmas pack did these come out of, Debbie? Huh? They're all Santas. They're, yeah, it's the Santa all Claus Santa is coming Santa. to town. Okay, thank you. I tried Santa. I tried a few different things. Good, good. Thank you. Yeah, we've had a couple different ones. The metallic yeah. one and the regular one. This was the regular. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right. Got myself a little bow. Oh, I have myself a piece of pink fern right here. Oh, it's pink on the back. Let's use that. <laughs> Let's try those black ones and see what we get. I have no idea. If this will work or won't work, we'll just figure it out because this is my creative process, guys. Anytime we do these, create your own. You just kind of get to see how my mind works, and it's a frightening thing sometimes. <laughs> how my mind works and when it doesn't. <laughs> ooh, ooh. I actually really like that, I think. Wow. Let's add another gold. Maybe a piece of this pink. Ooh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. And I don't appear to... Oh, I do have one of these, though. I have one of these leaf bouquets. And the yellow. That might be too much yellow. I may just go with the ferns this time. I'm really liking the way those are looking together. So I think I cut two of those black. Where did the other one go? Is it hiding? Is it part of this? Do I have two here? I have two here. Okay, let's see. What do you guys think of the black? Do you like it? Do you think it's too much? I'm interested in your impressions. You like the black, Brenda? Okay. Did you put the night before Christmas? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry. I, I'm like, I've tried everything now. I'm obviously not typing right. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That, Charma says it's, that's pretty bad when you scare yourself crafty. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Put my pretty little bow on it and we'll decorate the outside. A little bow which I have now covered up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put these down. I do like the way that's looking. And I don't mind if it peeks over my flap. I actually think that's kind of cool if it does. So I might move that up a little bit. Let's put a little black glue on this black. Yeah, I think I like it when it peeks out a little bit. Here's the original card. And see when it's peeking out, I like that. So we'll let this stand up and peek out a little bit. Yeah, this black kind of adds like an element of drama. <laughs> that's fun. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. This gold shimmer paper is a really nice addition. Sometimes you don't want anything that's as shiny as mirror board, but you still want something that kind of pops a little bit. And a shimmer can be the perfect touch. It's not expensive. And when you're die cutting, you only need a little bit. So, you know, if you have a half a sheet laying around, that'll, that'll cut a lot of ferns. I think we'll put the pinkness. Let's see. 
Let's put the black off to the edge over here. Kind of almost, the black con kind of almost becomes a shadowy side of things, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I was just saying, Sharma. Ooh, great minds working along the same lines. That is scary. Yeah, this almost looks like a shadow. I'm going to put this one kind of going off the opposite direction. I'm going to put this yellow in between. And then I'm going to put the pink over the top. Because <clears throat> why not? I love it when you guys give feedback as we're working. That's fun. Great fun. Okay. Let's put this here. And I think we'll put the pink coming up through the center. Love this fern dye. Did I say that 15 times already? Sorry, but I love this fern dye. <laughs> it's just so pretty and feathery. And neat. It's neat. What can I say? But that it's neat. I'm going to put a little bow coming across my stuff here. Kind of come up just a little bit on the bottoms of those. It's going to give me plenty of room to sign at the bottom and still allow this to really kind of peek out from the top. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Okay, now I need to do a little stamping. I need a little piece of black card, which I have right there. I had a little piece and I thought, I have a job for that. <laughs> I moved my stamping board just a little too far away. Okay. Next, let's get our stamp out. I'm going to stamp on a piece of white. And I want to say, choose what makes your heart bloom. I like the fact that this is kind of a nice little blocky one. I might be able to use, I think I can. I'm going to use this flap I had left over because why not? So I think we'll put this in here, tack it down with my magnets, and I'm going to put my grid line. I'm going to in just a little room there. I'm going to get my hybrid stamp pad out here. My detail black. This one happens to be from Pink Fresh. Several people make one. I do think this is a good one. My second Pink Fresh one, I started with my little cube. And after I used it all up, I thought, I need a bigger one. So now I have a bigger one. I think my printing is very clear. It could maybe use just an extra, just a little bit to be as clear as it could be. Let's try that. Oh, that looks beautiful. Choose what makes your heart bloom. Okay. 
take that off and put it right back onto my onto my storage sheet here. I'm trying to be committed to putting my stamps back where they belong so I don't end up having random stamps that are not with their sets because sometimes I do that. I'm going to trim this down now. Yeah, that little flap we were using ended up being perfect for our little sentiment. Sentiment looks nice and straight. I like that. Now I need just a little piece of our coral color. And I need my black cardstock. I'm done with this for now. I'm going to set this off to the side. <laughs> Top my glue bottle in it. Only because I didn't have my glue bottle capped. Come on, Deborah. There we go. Okay. I want a little piece of my orange. Okay, let's see what I've got for small scraps of this. Any small orange scraps hanging out here? That's not orange. Let's see what I've got. <clears throat> Hi, Mary. Good to see you, friend. It looks like I used all my little pieces for die cutting. Oh, no, I didn't. There we go. I just need a little piece of that. <laughs> so I'm going to put this on here. Give myself a little border around it. <clears throat> Hi, Thelma. Welcome back. We're still making this Z fold card. And we had a little trick to matching our angles. So if you decide to make this one back up and look at our little trick that we used, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put this one on here. here with this. I do have a pre-cut leaf that I can use up in the corner here. And I have a couple little blooms that I stamped when I was stamping. I'll go ahead and cut those out. Whew. <clears throat> No, well, there isn't a diet that matches this one, but it's not a difficult cutting job at all. So I'm just cutting out a couple of the little stamps. And you see how well that coral, I think what's it called, coral fire? You see how well that um, ink pad matches this paper? It's really a good match. I have a little tiny flower here. <laughs> I think I'm getting hot down too, Margie. 
It might be all your running around. <laughs> Could also be hormones. <laughs> huh? Am I producing enough heat in the air? <laughs> <laughs> Just whip around the edges of these little flowers. Okay. I'm going to put this on with foam squares under it. I'm going to go fairly low to the bottom to allow myself some room to glue my leaves. So I'm going to put some good foam squares under there. I had one good one and one not so good one here. I'm going to put that there. Get another sheet of those out. There we go. Do make sure you keep your foam squares where they won't be hanging over your edge. That's important. Okay. All right, I'm going to go fairly low to the bottom. I'm going to come out right about there. Just kind of match it up with the bottom. Now I'm going to put this leafy cluster, which I have already stamped on, under this one. Put a foam square there so I can kind of sit on this and then go off the side a bit. And then I'm going to pop up these two little flowers just a bit. So I'm going to cut some, cut a couple pieces of foam square to pop those up with. Okay, I'll put a flower here. I don't want to get over my words there. That's still a little too big. I'll cut that down a little bit more. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to we love group hugs. There we go. I believe we are done, guys. Here we go. Choose what makes your heart bloom. There we go. Isn't that pretty? It's pretty and it's delicate. But it's not really ultra feminine. It's just really neat. <laughs> Here's our original inspiration card. Look a lot alike. This one took a whole lot less time because we already had the angles. Okay. So now what do we want to do? I saw one done using this that I really liked. They had different colors, but you know, that's okay. Let's see. I also saw one where they took the yellow paper and kind of inked over it a bit. 
Let's try that one. I think that would be fun. I'm into doing some inking. Let me get a little piece of yellow here. Oops. Let's, let's see. Like this. And let's use our hybrid stamp pad. The colors in this kit are just beautiful. These are Margie's colors right here, aren't they? Aren't these kind of your color? The corals and the teals and bless Emma's heart. She said the other day, she said actually I think it was yesterday, she said, um, Mommy doesn't like lots of colors, but you do. So I take after you because you are colorific. Colorific? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's pretty cool when your granddaughter will tell you you're colorific. So I said, yes, we definitely both like color. <laughs> Not just any old grandma, but a grandma who is colorific. 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 That's just colorific in and of itself. <laughs> I got the biggest kick out of that. Okay. I'm going to stamp this image I love because I couldn't not use this today. I kind of have to. I kind of have to because it's beautiful. I ink this up good. Okay. Let's see what we get. Close my stamp pad. I'm going to get my, I don't know where my heavier Kathy girly girl thing is. It must be in a drawer. I could have get that back out because I like, I like this one, but I like the other one even better. You're wondering about this tool it's a tool made by kathy girly girl from our stream who doesn't like the way it makes her hands feel when she pushes and pushes on her stamps so she made these she made this one i believe out of a bottle and she made another one out of a the one that I like the most is made from a Yankee candle. And they, you just use it to apply pressure. Very cool idea. Wanted that just a little more pronounced. It came out kind of soft. So, oh, that's much better. Oh, pretty, 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 pretty. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wipe that one off since I have a lot of ink on it. And just wipe it off with a baby wipe. It's waterproof when it's dry, but when it's wet, you can just wipe it right off with a baby wipe with that hybrid ink pad. Peel this up and put it on my sheet. Living with my idea that I'm not going to have any more stray stamps. Gotta keep tabs on my stamps. Okay, so I have that. Now, 
what I'm going to do with this one is just add some color to this using my ink pad and a blender tool. Doesn't have to be this kind of blender tool. It can be around blenders, it can be brushes, any kind you choose. What did they do with those stamp pads now? They were right here. They're there. <laughs> Oops. I'm going to grab this coral, this fire coral. I'm going to grab some of my ink here, dab off just a little. And I'm going to change this color up a little bit. Maybe kind of blotch it so that I still have some yellow, but I have some that's corally. Just be fun. Just for fun. Gotta be artsy. Just for fun. I'll come out and around here a little bit. Maybe I'll leave the flowers in the middle. Yellow. That'd be interesting. Maybe not. I don't know yet. This maybe could have dried just a little bit because I do see a little fuzziness happening where I'm going over my ink, so it might have benefited from drying just a little longer. Note to self. It's still going to be pretty. It just might have been more clear looking if I had. Let it dry just a little bit. We have something that would go with this coral. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. It's I'm going to make it three and a quarter, I think. Well, that might be closer than I thought it was going to go. So I guess I'll trim it the other way now. Thank you. Let's see. It might not be quite right. If it's not, I'll go to that. Okay. Right. Okay. And I'm going to trim this edge a little bit. So now I guess it's going to be three inches, which is fine. Trim a little bit off the top, a little bit off the bottom, and now at three by six. I thought I was going to use a DL card with this, but you know, since this is a uh, three by six, four by six, hmm. what size do I want to use? Maybe I want a five by seven. Oh, that's a good idea, Thelma. Use one of your old um, backers off your stamps. That's a great idea. Oh, this is going to be pretty. Okay, so 
Let's get a piece of our black backer paper. I'm going to cut this to four and a half by six and a half. And let's see what we get if we put this on here. Ooh, I'm liking that. Um, do we have anything? Uh, we probably don't have anything whiter, but w maybe we do. How about the orange in the um, in the May Arts one? Mm -hmm. Let's try that. I think I might like I it to be a little bit wider. you wanted more dimension in this, you could stamp this twice and cut out a couple of these flowers and layer them. Do you like this thin or a little bit wider? Wider. Is it warm in here? Is it just both of us? Sun shining in the windows, I'm sure that that's okay. I don't know, I think I like that. I don't know what happened. Thank you. What happened if we did? <laughs> it is ponytail weather. Ooh, I like that. I'm liking that. I think I will do that. I think that's fun. Then I think I'll still add it both. Wow, sir. Okay, let's see. I don't think I want a huge boat, though. I just want to... <clears throat> that must have been a hobby job. I recognize that, Roberta. Bryce is always saying I don't need all the junk I collect because I might need it someday. <laughs> and that sounds like a job he would do. Throwing away my Yankee candle jars. <laughs> he hasn't done that, by the way. He has not. He just threatens all the time. I'm going, to try, I'm going to try, I don't know if I'm going to like it yet, but I'm going to try a 454 bow on the corner of this and then run a piece down the side. I think that's going to look pretty good. You need to turn this over. This ribbon is directional. The um, woven iridescent ribbon. I'm using the orange tone one out of that. So I do need to make sure that my tails are facing the front. Turn my little whale tail out here. I trim my whale tail by making a taco at the bottom, holding the fold at the bottom, and then clipping upward and out towards the end of the ribbon. Slide my ribbon off. Okay. 
Time to check this out and see what we think. Here is a ribbon. Oops, I'm going to need a little bit more of this, I think, Margie. Oh, did I not cut you in half? I need just a little bit more. Um, eight inches. Okay. Eight inches? Mm-hmm. Huh. Little I made a gift. What would happen if I wrapped this around this way? <laughs> These crazy things go through my head constantly when I'm creating. What would happen if Do you, you need just eight inches more? Yeah. Or you I need eight inches. Thank you. If I wrapped this like a gift, <laughs> I picked up my topper and put it here. What happens if I put the bow? in the middle. Is it good or is it awful? I don't know. Well, we've been talking about what we're going to do for Ted's birthday. I really think he needs to have some special stuff on his birthday, so he might get to go for a nice long walk. That sounds good if it's not pouring. But you never know in Oregon whether it will be or not. But he loves to go to walks with his daddy. So... I think I'll have to convince Bryce to take him for a nice long walk. And then I think I need to get some vanilla ice cream. Because he loves, loves, loves ice cream. And I don't think he'll have a cake, but I do think he might have a nice serving of ice cream. He is a real ice cream lover. In fact, my favorite ice cream is Gold Medal Swirl from Baskin Robbins. Gold Medal, I think that's what's called, Gold Medal something. Anyway, it's got chocolate and caramel and vanilla. And when I get my ice cream out, Teddy thinks he is entitled to ice cream, but of course he can't have the chocolate. So I have to wait until I find spoonfuls where it's all vanilla. Well, the last batch I got had almost no vanilla in it. And so he only got one little scoop out of my ice cream. I tried to call him after that to give him a treat. And he wouldn't come to me. <laughs> He was ticked off at me that he didn't get his fair share of my ice cream. So he went to bed with Bryce. And I thought the real test will be whether he snuggles up with me in bed. Because even though he goes to bed with Bryce, when I come in, he comes and snuggles up next to me. And that's where he sleeps all night. So I thought the real test of whether or not he's mad at me will come when I come to bed. And we'll see whether or not he will. He will sleep with me. When I first went in, he would not. He would not come over to me. And I patted my hand on the mattress and quietly, his brace was sleeping, but quietly called him. He would not come to me. <laughs> but about an hour later, he must have forgiven me because he came and curled right into his regular place. And last night, he got more ice cream. 
but I think he needs, he definitely needs some vanilla ice cream of his own. So I think I'll buy a, like a pint and just keep it in the fridge or in the freezer so he can have a little bit each night for a while. And he'll think that's pretty special. What a spoiled dog. <laughs> he is such a spoiled dog. We love him though. We love that boy. Well, this is very unusual. I don't know whether you'll like it, whether you won't like it. But I just, I don't know. I had to try something different here, so we'll see. Get some tape here. You could layer two of those acrylic blocks, Roberta, and wrap them with. That would probably give you a better grip. But that Yankee Candle top really works. And she gets them at the thrift store. I really like this topper we made. I'm not sure my my setting for it's going to be perfect. I just have to look and see. If you still don't like it, I'll make it go away and I'll make something else. Yes, that would be okay too. Call from private caller. Okay. I actually think I, I actually think I like it, guys. I don't know. We'll hold it up. You guys can tell me what you think. Should use my best glue ever, but I'm just going to use this because it's right here in my hand. I like it better when I move it over a little bit. Well, I tell you, just using a little bit of your ink on this on this stamp is a whole lot less time than coloring it. <laughs> I actually like it, I think. Oops. Well, see, this is why we use the best glue ever. But let me restick and try showing you again. What do you think? Is it a keeper? I think it's a keeper. I actually do. I think maybe we need a word, though. I think that's what it's missing. It needs a word. It needs a sentiment. Maybe that balloon. Let's put that balloon on here to see what that does. Need a little bit of cardstock again. Do you have any of that cardstock left from a minute ago? I do. Ooh, look at that. Let's put that balloon on here. Whew. 
worm in here. How's our time doing, Archie? We're at 5.36. 5.36. Okay. Let's put this bloom on and see if this, I think this is going to be what it needs. Oops. I'm wondering what this noisy thing is. Oh, just off camera, I've got my plates and my die cutter sitting here. There we go. Let's see what happens when we add some litter in here. I think that's what it needs. Now our bloom, I was surprised to see that they did not make this in one piece you have to glue the individual pieces here is that better margie so we're still working out the actual schedule but we we're notified today by the company that's going to do our foundation work that they are coming to actually tear up our foundation in the shop and in the house, actually, for that matter, on the 28th of June. Now you might be wondering, that's new. Why are you having to tear up the foundation? And we're having to tear up the foundation for a couple of reasons. On that side of the house, we have discovered that there is a natural spring under our house. And most of the time, you'll recall when we had the big flood before, and then I told you to avoid having this happen again, we had um, put um, water drainage system in our yard. Well, that has controlled a large part of it. And we haven't had any floods as serious as the first one but we are still getting water in there and that's not okay. You know, that's my warehouse and that's where our products are. We have to keep everything off the floor, we have to keep everything up and, you know, we have to promptly put big industrial fans in there so nothing gets smelly, you know, and we protect our products. You need to know that no matter what, we always protect our products. So, you never have to worry about getting a less than perfect item from us. But we have had now, um, I think it's three incidents where water came in and that we just can't continue to deal with that. So on that end of the house, the problem appears to be with what might be a natural spring. On the other end of the house, this house was built in the 70s. And when we have these great big, great big storms that we now get that we have not gotten in the past, we now have rainstorms more like what you guys get in the east, which we never had before. Um, before the weather started changing, we just had drizzle all the time. And maybe it would occasionally turn into something that might be defined as rain. But now we're getting really 
pronounced rainstorms. There we go. You like? I like the bloom on there a lot. <laughs> I'm still thinking, though, that maybe one more thing. <laughs> maybe just one more thing. Someone has suggested three orange dots. I am thinking the same thing. I'm thinking that we might want some gems. Do we have any clears in our drawer over there? Because I'm thinking I might want to take a clear gem and color it orange with my thick intensity marker. Stickles is another. So, yeah, no, that's good. That's perfect. Let's try coloring these with an intensity marker. I do not know what will happen because this is playtime. In playtime, we try all kinds of things we don't know for sure will happen, will work. Oh, but that's looking good. I do have to say that's looking good. I might have to give them a minute to dry. Vern says no row, row your boats this year, hopefully. So we have terra firma coming out. <laughs> and I can't even believe I'm saying this. We have terra firma coming out and they are going to take up the floor in my shop, in my, in my warehouse. They are going to jackhammer out the concrete two feet out from the wall all the way around the warehouse, not three out of four sides at least, three out of four sides of the of the warehouse. And then they are going to install a drainage system that if the water table rises and the water tries to seep in around the foundation, this system will catch the water and direct it back out of the house. It will have a sub pump on it. So the water never reaches the floor of the shop again. On Lauren's end of the house, where her, where her bedroom is, oh no, I'm totally loving that. Now it's done. On Lauren's end of the house, it's, our house was built in the 70s, and so it's now 50 years old. And I, it's a daylight basement house, so we're just getting a little bit of foundation seepage we've never had before on her end of the house. So on her end of the house, they're cutting the same channel. They're cutting the same channel two feet wide and the entire width of the house down there. That means that all of our cabinetry where all our products are stored are going to have to be moved covered and protected you have no idea what this means this is huge this is huge 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 they're all going to have to be moved covered and protected the store is going to have to come completely down and will be down for a month the work itself only takes three days, but the concrete has to cure for two weeks before we can put anything back. That is pretty, isn't it? That's very pretty. And this is not like anybody's. <laughs> this is just out of our heads. We did this one. So we are, yeah, the concrete has to cure for two weeks before we can put anything back. Then we have to put all the shelving, well, oops, um, we have to put the floor back in. We have to put the walls back in because they're taking at least two feet of the walls everywhere that they're taking, they're cutting the channels or taking two feet of the sheetrock off. And then we have to put the walls back. We have to put the floor back. And then we have to put all the cabinetry back. And... That's what that's going to mean, Mary R. The store is going to be closed for a month because there's no way we're going to be able to ship. 
Now we are looking, are there ways that maybe we can create class kits and have class kits and just a few of our staples available, like maybe glue and tape and some of our very staple items available and maybe class kits, but we're just really, you know, we're just thinking about what does this all mean to us? <laughs> I will keep you guys appraised on what's happening and we will keep you guys in the loop as far as um, when we're going to be closed, when we expect to reopen, what's going to happen with classes. I don't know the answers to these things yet because we just got the dates today and now we have to work with our contractors and and we have to figure out how this is all going to happen. Yes, next month. It does work try after okay. that. You know what, Irene? I love you. Thank you for saying that. It's such an expensive proposition. You know, the work to be done is expensive. Having the shop closed for a month is devastating. So to hear from you that it works and it stays dry holy cow um not a bad idea roberta to stock up on the things you expect to <laughs> um to need before this all happens um i think i'll be fairly dust free in here i may be pretty much living in this classroom for a while because i don't deal well with dust and they're going to be jackhammering up my concrete <laughs> We're going to seal off the basement and hang up some additional sheeting at the base of the stairs to try and keep it out. But I don't deal well with dust with all of my allergies. So this could be a really interesting venture. But the good news is one month done, out of the way, and we move on. So I will keep you guys posted on what's happening and exactly what our closure dates will be and yeah that's exactly what margie needs is for me to move into her basement <laughs> that's exactly what margie needs i'm sure she was just saying to herself geez i don't see enough of this lady maybe she should move in with me <laughs> At a little the end of my ribbon that was trying to sneak out there because I was using that little tiny piece. But I think I pretty much fixed that. So keep the mask, Sandy Debbie. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think my N95 is going to have a brand new purpose. Well, I think we don't have enough time to start a new project. So let's just review what we have. We did this really pretty card, really utilizing that coral and that blue. We've done a little stamping with our tags. We used our, <laughs> yeah, uh, unless I need something from downstairs, that is. <laughs> I may have to go to Joanne's. <laughs> Me. Yeah, I that's true. Margie's stock. got Margie's got about as much as I've got. So is there something I don't need? She probably has it. So <clears throat> yeah, but it's a it's a terrifying thought, but it's got to get done. We can't. We just can't keep, you know, running downstairs and responding to water alarms and staying up all night, you know, vacuuming up water. It just can't keep happening. And that's what's going to happen until we completely resolve this. We haven't had any big floods, like the first flood, where we had two, three inches everywhere. We haven't had anything like that since we put the drainage system in, but the drainage system alone is not gonna handle what we have to do this foundation work. So anyway, I'll keep you guys posted on what that means, but, um, we definitely will be um, closing the store and everybody's gonna need to redeem their holds before then. Um, once again, I'll keep you posted on by what date we need to have shipped your stuff. And um, yeah, 
So that's what we're doing. Yeah. No, we will be very, very careful. And I have professionals coming in to deal with stuff so that we know that we have completely eliminated any possibility of molds and the like. So you are absolutely right, Irene. That's the other reason we're doing this. When you have that seepage in and you're cleaning up and then you have seepage in again, you just know that over time you're going to develop those problems. To our knowledge, we have none at this point. But if we don't resolve this, that's going to be a problem. And that would be a silly, silly thing. So that's what's going on in my world. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions over anything we've done today or any questions about the kit or any questions about life in general before we sign off for the day this has been great fun i feel like i want to sit here and do five more but i do have <laughs> i do have um what was i going to say oh i do try to get you out on thursdays in an hour and a half to two hours <laughs> um well we get a bit of a tax break and that we won't make you know we'll be one twelfth less the money <laughs> um yeah, we'll be able to um, capitalize the cost of the job, which is not insubstantial. But um, yeah, it's just not going to be fun at all. We're only closing for a while, Ruthann. Don't worry. You can back up and and um, check out what I said we're doing. Yeah, I think ice cream is the story for Ted tomorrow. I think he's going to get a pint of ice cream for his birthday. He'll be very happy about that. <laughs> All right. Price How did I get the bruise? Price I had a colonoscopy this week, and that's where they put the line. She wanted to put it in my hand, and I said, you can't put that in my hand. I use my hands on camera three times a week, and all of my ladies are going to want to know how I got that big bruise. Ah, but <laughs> Glenda caught me anyway. There it is. There's the, there's the IV line. <laughs> so, any other questions? <laughs> Saturday, we are quilling again, guys. We are going to do such very fun stuff. Do not miss this. If you haven't gotten your kit yet, it's not too late. And you will find that quilling is so fun and so easy. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Let's, um, let's tune in at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Oh, sorry, Glenda, you have that coming up. That's not fun. <laughs> Yes, we will be, yeah, um, we're, we'll be closed for right about a month. And I'll get the dates to you when we have everything firmed up with the contractors and we know exactly what's going to happen. Only short term. And, you know, candidly, in the middle of the summer like that is a good time to do it because the weather should cooperate. Hopefully we won't be having any torrential downpours when they're, when they're in there tearing up the floor. I mean, just imagine what that would be like if we had them here and then we had one of those storms, you know. So in June, July, we should be fairly safe from that. Fairly safe. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so we will be doing that and, um, we'll have it past us by the time we kind of get into, <laughs> we'll, we'll have it past us by the time that we get into the, you know, real crux of Christmas season and doing all of our Christmas classes and stuff. Um, it's going to play havoc a bit with my Christmas in July, but we may do Christmas in July slash August. <laughs> I think that might be what happens. We're an adaptable bunch, though, aren't we? Because I'm going to miss half of July, but we can do Christmas in July slash August. And we may have some classes anyway. We just aren't sure exactly how that's going to work out. So enough on that topic. I just thought I'd let you guys know that there's, Change is afoot, but it's all good change. It will be 
for the best when it's done. And we're all an adaptable lot. We can make it happen. Okay. I'm For now, I'm going to say good night, Gracie. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Bye-bye.